Hello my lovelies and welcome back to Allotment of the Dead. So today we're going to be looking at aubergines. Um, again, a little bit like I do with my chilies, I don't just stick to one type. I generally have a bit of a mix of different ones um, with various different colours, flavours. And um, majority of these have come from Baker Creek seeds in America because they always seem to have a massive collection or different types of uh, aubergine. So uh, let's show you what ones we're planting this year. Okay, so we have about 12 different varieties there. Um, again, variety of different sizes, flavors, and uses really you can use with these. So let's start at the top and we'll go through. So the top row are my long varieties. So these are the ones potentially that you can literally slice into rings and they can get thrown into um, various different curries and things like that. And also stir fries, that sort of thing as well. Usually quite sweet. So uh, again, the flavors of these are really, really good. So we've got Satsuma long. Um, we've got a Thai long green one. Again, these are kind of going to get to probably six to eight inches in in length, maybe longer. Some of the actual these these two green ones. Uh, Nagasaki long. Again, a really long black variety, and these are the equivalent of your long purple um, ones that you can get. Um, I do have some long purple seeds as well. I might throw some of those in as well, just for the good measure. They're from uh, Premier Seeds. So uh, we'll go on to the, the next row. So again, these are your kind of your normal black varieties of eggplant or uh, aubergine. Uh, Mitoyo, which again is supposed to be one of the sweetest ones you can buy. And again, both of these are supposed to be gourmet types that the restaurants across the world will actually seek out uh, because of the sweetness of them. Um, we've got a couple of nice white varieties as well. One called Japanese White Egg and one called Casper. Now, I don't know whether Casper might be after Casper the Ghost, maybe. I don't know. And we're into... A nice red variety called Rosita. These again are very, very nice. Uh, I've tried these last couple of years and then they grow quite well and the uh, flavour of them is really quite nice. And then a couple of massive varieties. So uh, Aswad, um, this is a, a variety where the size of them can get to almost the size of a small dog. And Cambodian Green Giant, again, a really large variety. I always try a couple of the really large ones to see how big a, a fruit I can get. And I'm going to do the same again this year. Um, I do go to the uh, Malvern show in uh, um, autumn and they have the uh, the can of giant vegetable show there. And they, they have these kind of really giant, massive um, fruits there. So not got to the stage where I think I'm going to be competing but I think um, I'll be seeing how big I can grow I don't take anything with me when I go up there but uh, I'll definitely be seeing whether mine will get anywhere close to uh, the ones that have grown for the show and then we've got this nice small variety here called Thai green frog fingers so it's almost like Kermit's uh, gone a bit mad um, so no varieties there that you'd normally buy in the UK but I do have some Black Beauty as well. Actually, kind of your normal ones that you'd buy in the shops. So we'll, we'll try a few of those as well. Right. Let's set you back up on the tripod. Bear with me. Okay, so uh, 12 different sorts of aubergine. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this year. Um, Whereas before, I'd normally start them the same way as I've started the chilies. Um, I'm going to try something slightly different this year that I haven't tried before. So it might work, it might not. Um, 
but it's definitely worth giving it a go. So, because if it works, then this might be a really good way of dealing with early seeds and early seed germination. So, I've probably followed the world in some respects in ordering off Timu. So, I saw these on there. They were kind of like one pound something for 50, I think these were. Um, so, I bought two lots. These are rock wall cubes that you'd usually use for hydroponics. So, you kind of would get these rock wall cubes put them into some water, get them nice and moist and wet. And then you see that they've actually come with little holes in them. Um, you see it drops straight into that hole and then the seed would use this rock wool as its growing medium whilst it's a seed. Um, I don't plan on actually going into hydroponics, but I thought I might try these as that initial first step to um, get them germinated and actually get to the little seedling stage and and see how it goes from there and then pot them on into uh, just normal pots because the roots will grow through the rock wall as it would any other grown medium really and the, the roots will find uh, the way out of the rock wall just as easy as it would find its way out through soil so um, potting them on then up into uh, into small pots um, as we would normally um, but this would also have the benefit of you not actually disturbing the roots when you're doing it so uh, I'm going to give these a go it's not so again not something I've done before so to actually use these the first thing you have to do is get your um, rock wall actually into a container the way you can actually soak it to start with so we've got one full set of these so there's um, 25 in each of these so there's 50 here so that should probably give me more than enough I, that, that i need to actually start off all the seeds there because i only want a couple of plants of each but the first thing you have to do is soak them in water for about 30 minutes or so so what we'll do is we'll pour the water on. I might need a bit more. Yeah, I think I'm going to need quite a bit more. Okay, and then these will sit for about 30 minutes. So uh, we'll come back in 30 minutes or so and uh, go on to the next step. Okay, welcome back. Um, so we've had the 30 minutes soak and we've poured the water off and we've had them draining for about 15 minutes as well now. So um, they're nicely soaked and I've got them all laid out. Um, so I'm planning on planting 13 different kinds of seeds so I'm going to plant four seeds of each type in the uh, in the rock wall here, and then I've got two solitary ones here, which will be for my black beauty ones. I'm not overly concerned about those. You can buy those probably quite readily in terms of plants in the uh, garden centres and things. So if I need a couple of plants for black beauty, I'll probably buy a couple later on in the season. But um, I've laid it all out, and I've given myself a nice little... Um, chart as to which particular row has got which particular um, aubergine in. Um, can't really use the plant labels for these, I don't think. I've not really looked into whether you, there is plant labels for rock wall, um, but that's a simple method of uh, actually delineating where the things are. A couple of things to consider when you're using rock wall, uh, which I hadn't really thought about myself. Um, when the stuff arrives, it's completely dry. Um, don't know whether you know, rock wool is um, molten rock that's been spun like candy floss and then turned into these cubes. So when you open the packet, it's quite dry and it's quite fibrous. 
So some people have considered this to be similar consistency to the insulation foam that you get in your loft, um, which isn't particularly good for your lungs, and also asbestos. Um, it's not like asbestos in the fact that this won't give you cancer. Um, they did originally, when they first started looking at rock wall for um, growing things, as to whether it would be an issue. Um, but they've done all the tests on it, and they've not considered this as something that can potentially give you cancer. Uh, that being said, the fibres, when you first open the uh, the packets, that fibres that you, that you can almost sense them in the air when you open the packet, so it's probably advisable when you're using this to wear a mask, at least whilst it's dry. Uh, once it's wet, it's generally okay. So uh, we'll continue now. Um, I didn't wear a mask to start with. I'm feeling as if a little bit has um, got down me. Then I'm quite sensitive to these sort of things. But um, we'll, we'll carry on with the uh, with the planting. So. Uh, we'll start off with the first seed, so Rosita, it's a, a red variety of seed um, from Puerto Rico, or Puerto Rico. So seeds wise, they look quite similar in some respects to the chili seeds. So what we'll do is we'll plant a seed in each of these. So like I say, this is a, a kind of a test for me. So it could be, I think I missed one. It could be that these grow really, really well. It could be that they don't grow at all. In which case, it's not too much of an issue. I've given myself plenty of time. I can actually come back and um, plant another load if I need to. Still quite early in the season. Okay, so Aswad, this is a... Uh, variety from Iraq. I think you'll find if you order from Bacon Creek, they do actually do a lot of different seeds from a lot of different countries. And they have people going out all over the world actually looking for different varieties of vegetables and things like that. Um, you can probably find them on YouTube as rareseeds.com. So you, if you have a look for rare seeds, you'll probably find their YouTube channel. Lots of interesting uh, videos on there about some of these kind of rarer varieties of things that are uh, are grown. Okay, so Cambodian Green Giant, as you'd expect, it's from the Kingdom of Cambodia. Again, really want four seeds or so for this. And again, all I'm doing is dropping them in the hole. Um, the holes are quite uh, accessible. Again, so this Thai green frog. A nice small variety of aubergine. So where do we get to? Yeah. Row four. Okay. So I will continue to do the rest of these. I'm using the, cup, the um, chopstick just to push the seed down to the bottom of the hole. Uh, that way it's in contact with the, uh, the moist. Rock wall. Okay, so this next one is this Senshu. Um, gourmet variety of aubergine whatever gourmet means 
think gourmet just means you pay a little bit more for I think because most of the things you can grow if you cook them in a really good way you can make pretty much any any vegetable gourmet right Mitoyo, again, this is another Japanese variety. Japanese make a lot of eggplants, a lot of aubergines. Um, so they always say some of the best varieties of aubergines come from Japan. Not sure how true that is, but uh, we're worth it's worth a go to try, isn't it? Okay. I've added a couple of seeds to some of these, just in case the germination rate isn't so good. Um, but it should be okay. Okay, so the next one is Japanese white egg. Again, white variety. Really good for frying these ones. Seeds wise, again, they're quite good in terms of not a massive amount of seeds in these lots of flesh which is kind of what you want really from a, an aubergine seeds are great for the next season but uh, when you're actually using them you want something that is not going to give you too many seeds right casper so I think these ones are quite old seeds from last year. Again, they should be okay. Solanum species of plants, which aubergines are, are usually pretty good in terms of um, germination from old seed. I know I've planted chilies before now that were four or five years old and pretty much germination rate was pretty much spot on, almost 100%. Okay, Satsuma Long, again, quite a large, uh, long aubergine, this one. Okay. Tylon green. Nagasaki long. So they reckon that this one is sweet enough to eat raw. Um, not something I've tried yet, but uh, maybe this year, if I get some decent fruit off this one, maybe I'll try them raw. It's worth a go. I think I missed one, there we go. All right. And then the last one of the rows is Ping Tung. Okay. And then we'll end with a the seeds in of Black Beauty. These were off the front of a uh, gardening magazine, kitchen garden. Again, quite a really quite a good magazine. Makes a good read, but um, you also get quite a few seeds on the front of the magazine. So. That's the last two. 
Right. So that's a set of aubergines then planted in Rockwall for next season. Um, like I said, I'm not planning on going into hydroponics anytime soon. These are purely just to start the plants off. And again, that ability to not having to deal with the, uh, the root system when you're transplanting it uh, means you've got less chance of it sulking when you transfer it. And you can literally much, pretty much take the entire cube, put it into a pot, and it will basically grow on from there. Um, the only thing about these particular, um, this particular medium for growing is that rock wool doesn't decompose. It's made of rock, as you'd expect. Um, so when it comes to that whole green thing, it's probably not as good as something you can reuse. Um, because in effect what will happen is um, ultimately these will end up in landfill um, because it's not something that you can put in your compost. Well, I suppose you could if you break it up a bit. Um, it will give some moisture retention, but um, it's not ideal really for your compost. Um, but what is good about it is you're not using anything up. All you're doing is moving it from one place to another. So this used to be rock. Um, in a different part of the world. So all you're doing is moving it to a landfill, which you're moving rock from one place to another, which we do generally quite a bit in this country. Right, so what we'll do is we'll stick a nice um, propagator lid on this to hopefully keep some of that moisture in, and then we'll transfer this upstairs in uh, where all the chilies and things are. Uh, and we'll see how long these take to germinate. Um, I'm hoping that they take a really, really quick time to actually germinate. And then we'll pop these on, same as we did the uh, the chilies. Right, so that's my aubergines then planted for this season, or at least some of them. I might uh, put some in the green trays anyway, just to, uh, I suppose, give myself two chances of uh, getting some nice uh, plants this year. But I think this will work, so I'm not overly concerned that it won't. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, we'll speak to you soon on the next video. All the best to you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.